In the Watchtower, Green Lantern and Hawkgirl are trying to hack into bank records and get into an argument. Lantern points out that Hawkgirl only ever behaves like this when they are alone. Hawkgirl readily denies it, and just then, they are interrupted by a call from Batman. Batman confronts a television network executive for selling airtime to a certain Gwynplaine Entertainment, telling him that it is actually the Joker. The executive quickly calls to shut off the channel station before the Joker goes on air, but they see that the Joker has bought the same amount of airtime on all the other channels as well, to broadcast his own reality television special from Las Vegas. He's planted a time bomb somewhere on the strip, and only the Justice League can disarm it, because if anyone else tries, he'll detonate it immediately. The bomb is set to go off in just under 23 minutes. Joker also planted a large number of cameras all over the city, allowing him and the viewers to keep track of the league's every move. Now this is gonna be something special, guys. Joker cuts to Harley Quinn, who is broadcasting from a chopper in the air, and she shows the people fleeing the city in panic, except for one old woman, who spends the entire ordeal playing slots, unaware of the events surrounding her. The Justice League's Superman, Batman, Hawkgirl, Lantern, and The Flash arrive in Vegas. As the Joker and Harley report to the audience, Superman quickly locates the bomb with his X-ray vision. But the League is attacked by Joker's own squad of superpowered henchmen, the Royal Flush Gang. He introduces them to the audience as Jack, Ten, the King, and the Queen. Ten is able to attack Superman successfully, and Jack takes on after by enveloping the Man of Steel in his elastic self. Flash is finding it hard against the Queen as she sends glass and chairs after him running around in the casino. Batman sneaks in and tries to disarm the bomb, but the Flush Gang returns to surround him soon. Fortunately, the Green Lantern and Hawkgirl arrive in time to send the Royal Flush Gang retreating back onto the streets. Superman and Flash get on their feet and the League steps outside to meet their enemy head-on. As they battle the League, Joker explains their origin to the audience. A group of five kids born with superpowers, they were taken from their families and imprisoned by the government as teenagers to be trained as human weapons. Ten feels no amount of pain whatsoever, and he is equally strong as Superman. King is able to attack with fire. Jack is a very flexible guy and has the powers of elasticity. The Queen has the powers to control magnetism, and the Ace is still sitting beside the Joker, shell-shocked as ever. Joker has met with the Headmaster and gassed him with Joker Venom and all the guards as well to rescue the kids. The kids were grateful, and Joker unveiled their new identity as the Royal Flush Gang, giving them flying cards and entire makeovers. They each wants to lead the gang, except for the Ace, who acts all out of this world yet extremely powerful. Let's see how Batman's doing. Will he defuse the bomb, or will he be bat soup? As the rest of the League fights, Joker cuts back the show to Batman who is able to defuse the bomb, only to find it is a fake after it explodes with kitty celebrations. Batman informs the League and they let go of the Royal Flush Gang in order to focus on what's at hand. The real bombs, that is. Superman scans the strip and finds not one or two, but 25 bombs, with just under 14 minutes left. There's no way to tell which might be more fakes and which are real without searching them all out. The League splits up to disarm them, Green Lantern searches an underwater establishment, and finds a fake bomb instead of a real one. Batman goes into the Hawaiian casino and gets on top of a real volcano which Joker has built inside. Joker activates the volcano with oozing lava, and soon, Batman is attacked by the Jack from the Flush Gang. Joker even has real-time betting on the battles going on from the sidelines. It's not looking good for Batman against the Jack as the Dark Knight almost falls over from the casino top floor. Joker then cuts into the Flash, who has found a bomb placed on a Ferris, and he contacts Batman for the correct instructions. While battling Jack, Batman impressively manages to talk Flash through disarming a bomb successfully, and the Joker is not pleased. At the replica of the Statue of Liberty, Superman discovered another bomb, but is busy fighting Ten, preventing him from defusing it. Superman tries to talk with Ten, but all he cares about is beating Superman. Joker decides to take a break from watching Superman and Ten fighting, and moves on to Green Lantern, who has found another bomb at a casino. However, before he can begin to disable it, 
Queen arrives and attacks him from behind. She uses her powers to create spikes from coins of the slot machines and aims them at Green Lantern, who forms a shield with his ring and is able to destroy the metal. The Queen then creates a metal armor suit and begins to battle him using a sword she created. Hawkgirl soon arrives, so Queen morphs her sword into a mace and begins to fight her until Hawkgirl knocks her unconscious. Lantern begins to disable the bomb, but he and Hawkgirl soon get into another argument. Back at the studio, the Joker and Ace are watching the argument. The Joker realizes there is something more between them and begins to mock their romantic tension, but he soon does the unthinkable and detonates the bomb. Hearing a beep, Lantern ejects Hawkgirl from the building, just as the bomb explodes with Lantern still inside, much to Hawkgirl's horror as she screams his name, realizing what just happened. Frantically, Hawkgirl contacts Batman and searches the wreckage of the casino for Lantern. She finds him gravely injured. She tries to revive him with CPR, then finally succeeds with an impromptu electroshock from her mace. That was a mighty close call on the Lantern people. Abandoning the bomb hunt, she flies Lantern to get medical help, ignoring Batman's orders to return as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, Superman is fighting Ten, and he doesn't have much time to rely on. The Man of Steel punches Ten and sends him into the orbit and disarms the bomb. He then deliver another punch to Ten and hurls him through a couple of buildings. Since one of the cameras goes offline, Joker wants the chopper to go into a closer shot of the battle between Batman and Jack. Realizing the situation, Batman manages to down the helicopter carrying Harley Quinn by sending Jack through the rotator blades. By then, there was only one bomb left, with only a few minutes remaining. Flash gets to the location searching for the last bomb and encounters the King with his fiery blasts. Somehow, Flash manages to evade the blasts and wrap the King like an Egyptian mummy. But soon, Flash is taken down by the returning Ten. Batman plays on the jealousy part of Harley Quinn's mind by insinuating Joker's seeming affection for Ace, the last member of the gang. This causes Harley to punch him, seemingly knocking him out. Even the Joker didn't see this one coming. While Flash is getting beat up by Ten and the King, Superman turns up to defend him. It's hard even for Superman to defend against both Ten and King, but he manages to scare the King off by announcing the time on the bomb. Superman takes the fight to Ten, and he manages to blast him off the casino building. Meanwhile, Flash tries to disarm the bomb once again, but Joker distracts him. With exactly one second left, Flash grabs the bomb and disappears. Joker checks for the slow-motion frames and sees that incredibly. Flash managing to carry it out of the city, drop it, and get to safety, just as it explodes. The Joker applauds the League's success, but then reveals the horrific true nature of his plan, as Ace has a basilisk gaze, the power to drive people insane just by looking at them, either in person or on TV. Ace was so deadly, she had her parents mesmerized until they died in the living room. She was then taken away by the government into the prison with others, and was given the headband to keep her powers under control. The whole bomb plot was a ploy to drive up the viewership of the program to the maximum. By Joker's estimate, 60 or 70 million people are now watching, and now they can't look away, as Ace has them mesmerized. In a few minutes, their minds will all be destroyed. The TV crew is already going nuts one by one, losing the sense of reality. Even the Justice League are mesmerized, hence, no one is in control. A furious Harley arrives at the studio to confront Joker about their relationship. But Joker calms her down, then gets mad realizing she had led Batman into his hideout as well. Batman confronts Joker but is soon disabled by Ace. Batman suffers a similar fate to the others as he visualizes literal crazy in his mind. Joker then orders Ace to double down on the attack and Batman goes nuts inside his head. Joker then attacks him, literally kicking him while he's down and Batman tries to defend himself. As they struggle, Batman pulls something out of Joker's pocket, the mind control headband that Ace's government handlers use to pacify her. Seeing it, Ace is enraged and turns her power on Joker, driving him into a catatonic state. After the ordeal has finished, Ace walks out. Batman is too weak to follow her. Up in the watchtower, Hawkgirl reports to Batman that Lantern is out of danger. 
She tries to apologize for disobeying him, but Batman cuts her off, telling her she did the right thing. Hawkgirl goes to check on Lantern, who wakes up and confronts her, saying it is time for them to admit their feelings for each other. Hawkgirl states they are so different from each other as she is an alien, while John himself is human. So different. I mean, look at us. Just look at us. However, John tells her that he only sees a man and woman together and begins to remove her headdress. Hawkgirl is reluctant at first, but then allows him to proceed, revealing her true face. John and Hawkgirl then share their first kiss together. Back in Las Vegas, the old woman finally wins the $1 million jackpot on the slot machine. Good for her. Out at sea, a single man drives a sailboat and is rudely shoved out of the way by a huge yacht. The snobby passengers mock him but are soon distracted by a group of people dressed as playing cards. A king, queen, jack, an ace, and a ten riding flying cards. The group attacks the passengers and tries to steal their possessions, especially the jewelry and the watches. The young Batman, Terry McGinnis, notices the commotion and reports to Bruce Wayne. Bruce recognizes the villains but doesn't have time to explain. Batman arrives on the ship and breaks up the robbery. However, the Queen wrecks the ship and demands that Batman allow her family to escape or the people of the ship will die. Batman has no choice and allows his adversaries to leave. When Terry informs him they got away, Bruce insists he comes back to the Batcave to learn more about his enemies. However, Terry tells him they'll meet later as he is late for another appointment. Later at a nightclub, Terry meets up with Dana and begins apologizing for being late. But Dana says she wasn't expecting him and believes that Terry only cares about his job. Unknown to them, a blonde girl is watching their argument outside. Fed up, Terry leaves the club while Dana watches. As Terry leaves the club, the blonde girl intercepts him and reveals she witnessed the argument. They take a walk, where Terry begins explaining his problems to the girl. Revealing his job takes a lot of his personal time. She reveals she didn't know anyone, making Terry realize she is new to Gotham. She further explains that her parents move around a lot because of their work. The girl reveals herself as Melanie Walker. Suddenly, much to his surprise, Melanie kisses him. Terry is mildly surprised, but Melanie admits it's always been now or never for her. They arrange to meet the next night at midnight under the big clock. Melanie leaves, but not before giving him a kiss on the cheek. Terry returns to the Batcave. Bruce reminds him he's late and mentions Dana. However, Terry reveals they broke up. Bruce advises him the Flush Gang will be back and reveals they have a history and further explains that the Royal Flush Gang is made by family members. Meanwhile, at their apartment, Jack and Ace are sparing together until King appears and states if they were professionals, then Batman would already be dead, revealing he harbors a grudge against the Dark Knight. Jack doesn't understand King's problem as they got away with stealing the jewels. King silences him by punching him and changes the subject, planning their latest scheme. King notices Ten's absence until she returns revealing Ten to really be Melanie. The next night, the family are on the rooftop of a museum, seeking to steal a decorative sword. While Ten is busy disabling the alarms, King advises her to be thorough, assuring they have all the time in the world. Ten quietly disagrees as she is distracted as she checks the time for her date with Terry. Batman is flying in the Batmobile. Bruce advises him as to where the Royal Flush Gang are going to strike next, but like Ten, Batman is slightly distracted as he checks the time for his date with Melanie. Ten finishes disabling the alarms, King tries to make certain, however the security system is still active despite Ten cutting the wires. The family enters the museum, and as King goes for the sword, guards intercept them but they manage to escape. However, Batman manages to catch up with them and attacks, while Batman subdues Ace, the Queen and Jack attack him while King and Ten watch them. He eventually manages to stop them, and soon, Ten enters the fight. While they struggle, Batman finds an opening to attack, but cannot bring himself to hurt Ten. Soon, a guard arrives and tries to stop them, but is captured by Jack, while Ace manages to break free. Batman has Ten restrained, but is forced to release her when the gang threaten the guard. The group escapes, taking the guard hostage, but Batman still gives chase. To stop Batman pursuing them, King orders Jack to drop the guard, 
despite Ten's protests. Batman saves the guard as fall down to the ground. The royal flush gang manages to escape, but King threatens Ten for arguing. Batman is all right, but the guard reveals he injured his leg during the fall. Batman helps the man to the hospital, but while he checks the time, he notices he's really late for his date with Melanie. Later, Terry heads out to the meeting place, but she's nowhere to be seen. Feeling disappointed in himself, Terry begins to leave. However, Melanie soon arrives just as late as he. The couple happily reunite and enjoy their time together for the rest of the night. However, Melanie reveals to Terry that her family are planning on moving again. Terry then asks to see her again the next night. Melanie says yes, but reveals it as tonight as they watch the sun rise for the next day. Terry and Melanie share a hug to say goodbye and assure them they will both meet again that night. Because of their desire for companionship, things start going bad for both Batman and Ten. Terry refuses to go out again, much to Bruce's dismay. Meanwhile, at their apartment, King is scolding Melanie for her mistakes and informs her that she must stay focused. King gets angrier and states that Melanie might as well leave. She agrees with him and starts to head towards the elevator. The Queen speaks with her daughter, stating the family has always taken care of them and is curious why her daughter would want to give it all up. Melanie reveals to her mother it's because of a boy. Queen doesn't believe it to be real love despite Melanie's protests. Meanwhile, Terry is at the meeting place still waiting for Melanie. Terry's phone rings and it's revealed to be Melanie. Deciding that Terry isn't worth giving up her family, Melanie reveals she can no longer see him again and states their relationship didn't work out. Terry, worried for Melanie, traces the call and heads to her home as Batman. While investigating, he discovers a case filled with stolen jewels and a playing card, finally discovering the truth about his girlfriend. While Batman takes a closer look at the card, he realizes it's a trick card, creating a small explosion. The Royal Flush Gang return, and while everyone is delighted with their stolen goods, Ten is still upset for having broken up with Terry, while King is disappointed that Batman didn't show up for their latest crime, revealing he had a special card. However, Jack notices that their trap had been tripped and realizes that someone has been there. King orders everyone to search for the intruder, but instructs Melanie to stay, showing he still doesn't trust her. Queen searches the bedrooms until she discovers a device. Releasing gas that knocks her unconscious, Batman catches her and attempts to sneak away after turning himself invisible. However, as he attempts to escape, he soon knocks Jack unconscious. Unfortunately, Ace appears to him and puts up a fight. Batman struggles, but eventually manages to beat Ace. Batman searches the apartment and soon finds Ten. Batman is shocked seeing her that he doesn't attack. However, unknown to him, it's a trap as King secretly hides nearby. However, he soon throws the special card that he had prepared for Batman earlier. The card creates a large explosion that sends Batman outside falling. Batman saves himself and King soon appears and destroys his wings but manages to grab onto King's playing card. Distracted, King and Batman land on a roof of a nearby building while in the process destroying King's playing card. Ten then appears to them and is struggling to decide what to do. While King wants her to help him escape from the arriving police, Batman hopes that she will run away. However, Ten decides to help King, but a police officer shoots her down. Batman saves her, but since she chose to side with King, He's branded her as a criminal as well. That morning, Terry watches as Melanie and her family are arrested. Terry is distraught at this troubling experience, but Bruce arrives to offer his support. Terry apologizes for the way he acted before and asks Bruce if he had difficulty with romance. Bruce smiles and begins to tell Terry about his relationship with Selena Kyle as they walk away. Thank you for watching Second Look. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos. Have a nice day.